I got a start on this lacing here for the fuel tank bay. And this first rib I got done. And it doesn't look too bad. Took my time on it, kind of learned on it, started on it, watching the video while I was doing it. Well, anyway, that's all done. I wound up making a mistake here when I first started measuring this thing out. Now, this is open here on the underside of it, but the top side of it's closed in. This is that false spar for the inboard flap. And so I've got holes poked in there for that, but the hard spot, hard point on it is right here. So there's not going to be any rib lacing up any higher than that. So those holes don't get anything in them. But anyway, I got that much of it done and I put it on two inch centers on there. So there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen of them. Fifteen rib laces on there. So I got that one done. And I think that's two sections of it. I don't I, you can't tell from here where the knot is and I guess this is where the knot uh, starter knot is this is where the ender knot and then it started and did the last ones there and I took the extra string that I had here that was left over from doing this one and went over there and started and did the first five of the ones on that next rib over now these this one here and this one here are not true ribs they're channel aluminum in there that is bolted in with brackets into the spars on both the front and rear spar this one here is a true partial rib. It, it has a nose rib on it. It comes all the way back into the tail end of it. So I went around those and I put some masking tape on them. I don't have any more anti-chafing tape. Or I would have put anti-chafing tape on those on the inside of them because they're short. And that string uh, cord just wraps right around and it was kind of sharp edges on there. On this ce uh, center one here that's a true rib, I went in there and put some of this reinforcing tape on the side of it so it's a little stronger because it has a sharp edge on it instead of having two edges and being just a, a square channel this one is a rib and it has so it has a cap strip out here on the end and then it has the web that goes in there and it's a little sharper so anyway I put some reinforcing tape on that to double it up to make sure it doesn't cut through that uh, strings so we'll start this again this will be a new starter stitch right here and I'll run that cord through there or the needle through there go around to the other side pull it through this side and then back through the hole You know, for most of that through, I leave myself plenty of, of string to work with here. And then we tie a square knot, a Boy Scout knot. They say it's left over right or right over left over right for one and then right o over left for the other one. It could be left over right and then right over left. It doesn't make any difference as long as you wind up with a square knot, which is, you can see here, you've got the loop running around through here on the one side. And the loop running over your working part of the rope on that side and bring that together and then you put a half inch in it with this tail end and then you can start pulling that together and because that's wax string that will slide and we get that down there like that pulled together and then i can run the needle up through there and make a half inch on the other side of that and then we'll go ahead and tighten that knot up the rest of the way come on knot tighten up there it goes just have to wiggle it a little bit to get it to tighten up and then once it gets tight then i can put that other half inch in there and want we'll to leave a little tail on there don't doesn't matter this much won't hurt anything but you want to leave a little tail on there and then we can run that needle back through that hole and push that knot through there or pull it through from the other side so I'll run that needle back through that hole and pull it out on this side and give it a little pull so that 
knot comes through there. Then we'll take the needle and run it to the next hole up. Pull that through and then run the needle back through that same hole. Pull it through that hole, but we don't want to pull it all the way. We want to leave a little loop on the other side. So we'll put that needle back on the, around that rib and through that hole. Now this loop got two legs on it here. Got one leg that's tight that this comes down to this other knot here. Want that on the upper side and then the knot, the leg here that is the loop for this string on the bottom side. And this needle comes right up through that loop there. They call it a pond in some of the uh, videos on YouTube. There are some good videos on YouTube on doing this. So anyway, you've got a pond and this is the pine tree or the palm tree or the pineapple or whatever the hell it is. Anyway, that comes up through there and you go underneath. This is the slack line here, the slack loop. Go underneath it and over the other loop and pull it down and then your slack loop will go in there like that. So then you take a half twist on this loop right here and go up underneath that other, the, the movable end and then back so that this pineapple, pine tree, palm tree, uh, piling, whatever it is, is up on top of the, the needle like that. And that gives you a figure eight knot right there. So then you can pull the String through there. Don't want to pull it all the way through, but now we can start tightening up this knot and by pulling on the standing portion of it, the pine tree. And then get pull that tight, just slide it sideways, pull it tight, and then once it's tight, then we can pull on the free end of it, and that's our knot right there. So now we'll do the same thing. We'll run this, push that knot through there. It'll go through. Put the needle in there, out that same hole again. What's that? Three times that that needle's gone through that hole. Now on this one, I've got the rib lacing or the, um, yeah, the rib lacing in there. The, so I've got to go make sure and go underneath it. And you want to make sure that the string doesn't interfere with anything. I've got my cable down here for the aileron. I don't want it tied in there. Uh, anything else that might be loose in there, you don't want it tied in to that string. So then we pull that through. Now I don't want to pull down on this. We want to pull that knot through there. Don't pull, want to pull down on this or that'll act like a zipper and just tear that uh, fabric apart right there and just rip it and you don't want to pull it out this way it'll do the same thing so we want to pull it straight up like that and it can use the needle to help push that knot right through there so it disappears now just do the same thing over and over and over again run that
Now with this, I'm actually able to uh, go around the other side and pull that knot through. If I'm doing it with a regular rib stitch where I've got to go through this hole here and then find this hole here and come up, then we've got to work on getting that a little better. Now the last one here to tie it off, you do exactly the same thing as you do on all the rest of them, except when you come down here to the end, you put a half inch in there to, to tie that off. And then we'll just pull that through the inside like we did the rest of them and that knot will disappear. And I'll cut that off. All right, I got two of them done. I only made a couple of mistakes here that I was able to correct. But I've got uh, two ribs done. You can see along here. I don't know whether you can see it or not. But anyway, this uh, thread, this cord is waxed. So as you tie the knot on it and run it through here, some of the wax comes off forms up around these holes. We'll have to go over this with some preps all, clean this all up before we put the tapes and stuff on it. But we still got a lot of work to do before we get that far. So two done, two down, and two more to go. I've got this one here is another one of these partial ribs. And then this one here is a full rib, but this is the rib for the uh, outboard fuel tank bay and the top of it has a flange on it for screwing the fuel tank down to, the fuel tank cover down to. So I'm going to do this one the same way that I did the rest of these. And then the rest of them after that will all be regular rib stitching. Uh, I can get my wife to help me with those. I could probably still do them, but it's uh, kind of a pain uh, going through. you got to go through uh, these holes. And then find the hole on the other, the matching hole on the other side. So the thread goes through here, and then, like I said, you got to find the matching hole on the other side. So it's easier to do if somebody's over there direct, giving you directions on how to do it. Anyway, it's time to quit for the night and take the dogs out for their uh, evening stroll. I might come up later tonight and finish those two up. Do my usual, burn the midnight oil. <laughs>